standards are basically voluntary. You can come up with other means to comply with it, but still it should be closely aligned to the intent of the standards. That's something you may, uh, may be running in. Um, and if your app has a clinical functionality, or in our case had a hearing aid functionality, then you are faced with hearing aid standards. So all of a sudden you need to have testing facilities to validate, to verify that um, the product actually does what you plan it does. So you need to look for test houses, test equipment, extra costs, to have them um, calibrated. So all these other dimensions come in. Um, okay. Um, okay, and then uh, when, while working in the App Store, if you upload it in the App Store, the language requirements do apply. But how to deal with a recall? <coughs> you build your product, there's a bug in it. And normally if you distribute to physical customers, you go to the hospital and say, well, this product has a bug, please recall the product. But now it's out there, and it's on my app, on my iPhone, and I'm no longer syn I'm not synchronized uh, for a week or two. I run around with this uh, app, with this potential bug. But this is a challenge to deal with. Especially also because you, don't, you do not control the platform in which the app is actually distributed. So in that regard, if I'm basically, if I'm distributing this app into the App Store or Apple or Android or whatever, I would say then that perhaps to be a legitimate way, Apple and, and Google would be forced to enable the, 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 this recall and basically delete for every user of the, uh, of the app, uh, the, 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 the app on their devices. Would that be possible? Well, the new is Apple. I wonder if it is possible. Yeah. I think they do. The same applies with single oh, that's there. The same applies with synchronization to iOS updates. So Apple updates and applications. And I still don't do that. I still have this app. So they run into compatibility things which you which you can solve, solve <coughs> to smartly think of as part of your design. So what are the disable mechanisms should you have a problem with? That the first, as if the product the, the patient comes online and it is not really synchronized that you disable the product. Send a pop up, first send up a pop-up. It does ignore and just need to say or whatever. So there are different ways to deal with it. It's under the uh, new medical devices regulation. There's a supply chain regime that's put in place, and that actually also addresses specifically distributors <coughs> in the definition that would also put in a distribution platform. So Apple would be an importer or a distributor or both under the new medical devices regulation when that enters into force. Then they also have their own autonomous obligation to have a process in place to verify compliance of the manufacturer. So then That's Apple, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then they are going to be uh, obliged to verify that the manufacturer has done the required conformity assessment, for example. So this is going to be a lot of work for them. And presently, they are sort of sneaking under the radar about it, but I'm pretty sure that they are uh, uh, working internally to uh, set up the process for that. And that as soon as this regulation is in a shape that they think, okay, now there's no escaping it, then suddenly you will see that it will be really difficult to get in your applications into the, uh, into the App Store if it's in the healthcare. Yeah. 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 Well, so you, if you upload a new update for your app, do you need to get another approval? I don't have to say the word. Um, if, your, if it has a, it's a minor update, which you see all the time on your phone, yeah. you need to go through the approval procedure again. Um, <coughs> you have a proper quality system in place, etc. But still, well, it, it's not it depends. Person, it? No, basically no. But you would need to anticipate by subscribing that in your procedures that the, 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 the minor revisions can be implemented, which have no clinical relevance and set criteria for that, that you can implement them. Yeah, if needed, you need to do that. And suppose that there is a bug, so you have a recall mechanism and you, and you pull out a, a new version. Does that mean to go through? Um, for, okay. Yeah, good for, 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 uh, for the version with the bug. Well, if 
if you make a new version, basically you would need to still uh, update that to the. Uh, uh, if it's a it de de depends on the classification. For class one device self certification, but still you would need to update the, uh, the database of the VSAT that you bring a new program. If it is not, if it is a higher class, you need to go through your notified body and get it actually approved. <coughs> okay. Um, as I said, software, software is, is quality system. For me, it's synonymous to quality system. If you build software, you can only do that by doing that in a kind of structured way to have defined its own set of SOPs for that we basically is the quality system. <laughs> for class 1 devices, the mandatory part is that you need to take care of change control, post marketing, uh, post marketing and communication to the uh, authorities. And for the high class, it should be to build in the uh, formal quality system. Um, so, and this is a uh, and this is a project Eric and I went through for this this uh, this hearing uh, aid app. That this was we needed to establish a 34 and 5 based uh, policy system. The file needed to be audited. The quality system needed to be audited. And there, we needed to select a notified one. There are many notified bodies, GCRI, TUV, PSI. Uh, so I have talks with more than one notified body to see because you have a business relation with them. Uh, how is their how, how is their field of expertise? Um, and what's your relation with them? What's your business model with them? And preferably select on one of the big ones because the new uh, medical device director will also have a uh, the new data. Medical device regulation will also have a shake out, may have a shake out in the normal uh, And if you build a quality system, here we go again, there, there you must be dealing with a number of procedures. So the important one is product realization because that is what you do. And uh, you may subcontract activity, you can buy hardware to build your software on it, you buy, may also buy testing services for it, to deal with it. So all these aspects deal with that, uh, and that we you will need to address. And basically, this is a must for a uh, for a class two A device for the higher devices. Then you must have such a system. But building software in a medical arena also has these dimensions. That you you can only do that correctly if you have it do it in a structured way. I think this. I don't est estimate it, this project. We worked for this, uh, Eric and I worked on this project with this client. The time frame is 10 to 12 months before you have a set of system established. You can bring in a set of SOPs, and basically that's a two day work. But still, it needs to be implemented, it needs to be tailored to the organization. So, really, to have a system up and running is, uh, is, is, is some work. And we work with engineers, and they say, well, we could act on with all sorts of uh, proposals as well as bullshit that doesn't work for us, so it needs to be more condensed. So we really work with them into a model which works for them because you can impose a quality system, but that will never work. We need it to have it actually implemented and people to be motivated to work with them. Yeah. 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 Oh, sorry. Uh, Kappa is. Uh, at the moment you encounter a complaint or something which is not working according to the way it should do, then you should do a corrective action to solve the issue. But if there is something fundamentally wrong or needs to be changed on a systematic level, then you also need a preventive action. So adapt your quality system to uh, prevent for the reoccurrence. So if you have your CE mark for the product, and, in the, and if you have, or if you have self-certified your product, it's time for champagne because then it's already the product can on the market. But basically, that was only the preparation phase. Then it starts because uh, then you have the product on the market. You need to keep track how it works, where it is. If there are issues, how to resolve. If customers complain, how to take that into account. So that's that's really. Uh, um, <coughs> Um, yeah, basically it brings in this continuous process to which quality system uh, often have that you need, uh, need to keep the product, keep the CD mark rather than get the CD mark initially. 
So basically that uh, concludes my presentation. Are there any questions? Yeah, it's, um, a lot of things you mentioned are things I would do anyway. Yeah, right. Uh, but can you say the project you mentioned with the hearing aid, uh, the percentage you have to add on to the budget uh, that we, 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 we think you didn't want to do anyway? Now, unfortunately, the higher tax rate, so the impact on the budget was huge. <laughs> <laughs> but, but still, yeah, it took some time. It took time, engineering time, particularly engineering time to get the engineers motivated and to work on that and not being too able to work on new projects but work on quality and which was new which was challenging and it took some time to get them motivated and to have it in because I usually uh, <coughs> uh, I call it the pie factor I multiply uh, the budget by the, the 3.14 uh, <laughs> if, if it's an IT year project yeah. but do I have to still multiply it now with medical devices? Well, basically, the film quality system I mentioned is a, is a one time effort. But still, I think, uh, I don't dare to say, but it, it comes close to the pie factor. Was the price of the app in the app store? Sorry? Was the price of the app in the app store? Oh, yeah. is, uh, the app is uh, 5 euro for the price. Yeah, 5 bucks. 5 euro. So we never recovered the just for the test. It, then that's, it, if you sell it like that, you will never sell it. But it's a business model of stuff. There was one more question. Yeah, thank you for your presentation. Do small uh, companies will be able to go through through this whole process? I mean, it takes about 11 to 12 months. Uh, I don't know about the costs, but will it kill them? Or will all these big companies will be able to see it? Yeah, that's a challenge for startups. I agree on that. And uh, uh, you may hire third-party experts, but you can also do it yourself. It's not rocket science. So, but it's, it's a challenge. I must agree with that. Yeah.